were resounding joy. Glory to the name of the Lord God Almighty. Him alone. You worthy and the praise. Just wave those hands wherever you are. Here's the reason for this beautiful season. Jesus, the Lamb of God. Sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Be thou glorified. Thank you, O Lord Jesus. Sweet, gentle Spirit. Just welcome the Holy Spirit right now, wherever you are. Honor the sound of my voice. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. He is ever. You are ever, Lord, to do more than we can ask or think. To accomplish anything that comes my way, He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. Jesus love me hallelujah I am so excited and so happy the greatest miracle that was done on earth is the miracle of salvation praise God and I'm so glad to announce to us wherever you're connected from in this season watching this broadcast that the greatest miracle in my life, I'm so happy to testify that is the salvation. The relationship I've come to have with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is greater than anything you can ever imagine. Praise God. We've come to a lovely, lovely time, which is a time of the world. And I want to believe 
in my heart that every one of you have your bottle of oil you have your bottle of olive oil just by your side as this ministration is going to be coming for thank you holy spirit thank you lord oh lord jesus your name be praised have a father Today, I'm going to be speaking on a very awesome topic today, how a great destiny starts, how a great destiny starts, or you can tag it on your own form to say how I can start the great destiny that God has put inside of me. I want to come to tell you today that everybody desires to be great. Greatness lies inside of every individual. But there are certain things about greatness you must come to terms with. Nobody eats food that is not well cooked and enjoys it. Every good food must be well prepared. God has put inside of you greater heights and greatness. But it is your responsibility to bring it to materialization greatness inside of you is like untapped resources greatness inside of you is like the gold that has not gone through the process of purification can I hear you say purification nobody enjoys gold in the state of which God found himself that it has not gone through the process of fire just like I will always say that whenever you talk about David, the next thing that comes in your mind is Goliath. It was Goliath victory that David got over him, the giant called Goliath, that gave him the announcement on earth that he was a suitable king. Remember when prophet Samuel got to the house of Jesse and anointed David as king. That was a meeting that was done in house. Somebody say in house. Greatness and anointing and announcement can come in different forms of shape. I tell people, I say, God may have called you but the earth has to accept you. Somebody say, I hear you. When the calling of God is upon you, there is another phase that you must come to that the earth, talking about men and mankind, must accept you that yes, the calling of God is upon you. And the Bible says he found favor before God and before men. You may find favor before God, but if your favor is not powerful enough to drive men to believe in you, remember the earth is giving to man. Last week I was speaking on helpers of destiny. Today I'm speaking about something that you as an individual have to generate inside of you. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. Please, I perceive in my spirit that some of us are not opening our Bibles from your home. So in the name of Jesus, open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 9, 6 to 7. It says, for unto us a child is born. We are going to be focusing on the life of Jesus Christ. Every one of us wants to be like Christ. The meaning of 
Christ or Christian is Christ-like. Every one of us want to pattern our life and destiny after Christ because we are following him. The more we look upon him, the more we be like him. But nobody is ready to go through the hurdles of life to get there. How a great destiny starts. For unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. You must be a child first before you turn around to be a son. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The Almighty God. If that Bible is not a borrowed Bible, please underline the Almighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. Verse 7. And of the increase, not decrease. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom. If the Bible you have also is yet not a borrowed Bible, please underline the throne of David and upon his kingdom, praise God, underline his kingdom. He said to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. That the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Here comes prophet Isaiah. God gave him the ability to 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 peep into the future. Isaiah, one of the prominent prophets in the Old Testament that had the ability to foresee and foretold the birth of Jesus Christ. But when you study the prophecy of Isaiah, it has so much beauty surrounding, so much promising you know, joy and, 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 and as you can call it, jollification of her. Many times when prophecy goes before us and a word of prophecy is released, I tell people, I say, don't be so fast to listen to the part A of the prophecy. Give attention to the part B of that prophecy because it is what you do after a that will sustain that word and that prophecy. Everybody that spoke about Jesus spoke about something wonderful, something glorious coming, something enjoying, something you're never going to regret about it. Nobody talked much about the pains that he will have to go through. We're going to be seeing some, there are a whole lot of prophetic words that were released in the Old Testament before the coming of Christ. But we're going to be, I'm going to take you through a journey right now. We're going to be running. So follow up with me. From the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 to 6, it says, We know he is from the line of King David. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king, underline the word king, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. He said, this is the name by which he will be called the Lord a righteous savior. When Jeremiah saw this, Isaiah came back again in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. He said, we know he is from the line of Jesse, the father of King David. A shoot will come up from the storm of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruits. 
the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Follow me. From the prophecy of Micah in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. We know he was born into the tribe of Judah. The region of Ephrata. In the town of Bethlehem. But you, you Bethlehem, Ephrata. Though you are small among the clans of Judah. Out of you will come for me one who will rule over Israel whose origin are from of old, from ancient times. That was Micah speaking about the birth of Jesus Christ. Isaiah returned back again in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. He said, we know that he was born from a virgin. We know. How could Isaiah have known? Let me tell you, whatever you do in life, never become a person that does not have prophecy over their head. How could Isaiah have known in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, that we know he couldn't have known if not by the revelation of the Holy Spirit about what is to come and what is to become of mankind. So we know that he was born from a virgin. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. And what's that sign? He said, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And you will call his name Emmanuel. Thousands of years ago, Isaiah prophesied that the name of the baby shall be called Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel means God with us. And it indicates the divinity of Jesus. Jeremiah did something very close to the pains that is going to come through the birth of Jesus Christ. The challenges that is going to be connected to the glory. That's why when you see a man, don't be quick to ask him, oh, you, you are so successful, teach me. No, tell him to tell you the pains that is behind his success. Everybody loves honey. Everybody takes honey. You use it for your tea. You use it for your bread, your sandwich. A whole lot you can use honey for. But do you know that it's not easy to go through the bees to get that precious thing. That greatness you are talking about, that destiny you are preaching, are you willing to go through the challenges to get to that destination? Nothing is given to anybody free of charge. Whatever you have, you must fight for it. Am I communicating with somebody? Jeremiah came close. When Jesus was born, King Herod slaughtered a number of children in an attempt to kill them. To kill him, to kill Jesus. A lot of children had to die because Jesus was born. Child of God, a lot of persons today had to go through pains because you were born. There is no destiny that does not have challenges. These are part of your testimony. Some of us don't want to go through any hurdles. You just want to arrive. There is a saying, he that arrives before their time will disappear before their time. Don't be in a haste to arrive. Don't allow the sense of I have arrived get into you. When I hear people talk, I know from the angle from where they are coming from. And I know how far they will go. Somebody say, I hear. 
when a man is after telling you how the precious time see, let me tell you I, my ministry today as early as 90s I had foreseen it how the challenging it would be I was giving the testimony that the early time of my life as a believer knowing that I'm a believer and I had this calling upon my life in sometime in 1996, 97 down to 99 I was having this encounter each time I shut my eyes I'm not talking about sleeping each time I shut my eyes I see myself holding a Bible walking on top of a sword without shoes on my leg and as I keep walking on it I keep seeing my foot being pierced I see blood all over but it doesn't inflict pains upon me each time I shut my eyes I want to be great and I want to have a great destiny child of God there is a price to pay nothing is free salvation is free but you still need to buy your Bible nothing is given to you on the platter of gold everything you must become you must work your salvation out with fear and trembling Jeremiah predicted about the slaughtering of babies on the on the season that Christ was born in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15 he said a voice was heard in Ramah Morning and great weeping. Jeremiah 31 verse 15. A voice was heard in Ramah. Morning and great weeping. Rachel weep for her children and refused to be comforted because they are no more. A voice was heard all these men they gave great prophecies about the birth of Jesus Christ but something lovely is about to happen I come back to the to the, to the, to the board of my message to drop this bombshell to let you know that even though Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and even though he was a second in Trinity and he is still the second in Trinity that does not exempt him from the challenges of this life today based on the prophecies of these great prophets in the time of old you and I should have expected that the birth of Jesus should have been right on the bed of King Solomon right? oh yeah oh of course they say the government shall be upon his shoulder right? because men do not understand what the government stands for they will be quick to mean that okay so he should be born because he's he's born of david from the lineage of david from the lineage of jesse everybody in israel knows that when you talk about the lineage of jesse you're talking about the lineage of kings you're talking about the lineage of great men His birth, everybody believed, was supposed to be in the best of the best of the best hospitals. No greatness is born on gold and diamond. Any greatness that is built on the, on the, on the platform of gold, silver, and diamond, that greatness is suspicious. And cannot stand the test of time when the wind start blowing hallelujah let, let me show you something in the book of Luke Luke chapter 2 let's look into Luke 
so right on in Luke we shall look into things that are very supernatural am I talking to somebody just follow me Luke chapter 2 verse 6 to 7 I'm going to be reading from the King James and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered praise God talking about Mary giving birth to Jesus verse 7 and she brought forth her first born son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger if that Bible is your own please underline manger now he laid him in a manger who the same Jesus that was spoken of by the prophets the same Jesus that was declared that he is a king He was laid in the manger. Why was he laid in the manger? Why is it that they picked the manger? Joseph was not among the rich in the society. He, he was an average young man. And they were on their journey, moving from one community to the other suddenly necessity was called upon them because the child needed to be born and they sought for the best rooms the Bible said there was no room meant for Jesus they sought for the best hospitals they couldn't see one they sought for the best of the best house because this child and angel said to me as the father that this child shall be the Messiah. So I was looking for a good place to give birth to him. Let me announce to somebody. It doesn't matter where you were born. The hospital has nothing to do. The hospital address has nothing to do with your birth and your destiny. Your geographical location is just a mere expression. It has nothing to do with your destiny. If God can bless you in Canada, he can bless you in Africa. If God can bless you in Asia, he can bless you in Europe. Anywhere at all, the hand of the Lord meets you. He is capable to bless you there. Somebody say, I hear you. They sought everywhere. They could not see him. The Bible said they could not find a place. There was no room in the inn for him. So the only place they could get so cheap and so easily for free of charge was a manger. And you know what? That manger was not even, I tell you the truth, it doesn't even belong to Joseph. It was a borrowed manger. My life is so, is so blessed. And it has nothing to do the, with the failures of my past. My tomorrow has nothing to do with where I was born. born. My tomorrow has nothing to do with where I come from. Am I communicating with somebody? I am a child of destiny. I am a child of necessity. For necessity is laid upon me to fulfill destiny. Just like as I told you last week Sunday, that there are people your destiny is tied to them. You got to pray for them day and night. The coming of Jesus Christ, the destiny of humanity was tied to it. Manger. A manger is not a place where you can, you can say, oh, it is a lovely place. A manger is a place for animals. A manger is a place where the animals, they go to feed and sleep. It's not a place that is built for humans. The lowest of the lowest was where the destiny was born. 
But I, 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 Isaiah said that for the government shall be upon the shoulder of this person that was born in the manger. But you see, Isaiah never mentioned the manger experience. Child of God, are you going through what you're going through because you feel and you perceive in your heart that what you're going through, you're not supposed to go through? I tell you the truth, go through it. For out of that challenge of life lies your testimony. The challenge with people today, nobody wants to start small. And when you see people that are so prideful, they are not willing to start from the foundation. Jesus, as powerful as he is, started so small and built everything that has to do with him to the greater heights. A man that started his ministry just so so early did his ministry only three years yet impacted the whole world till date am i communicating with somebody jesus 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 came we could imagine the heavens to open that's the challenge with the israelites today that they never believed in him because they believe that the messiah will come from heaven that's the kind of sign they're looking for. That the heavens will open. I was born in a manger and I prophesy to somebody watching me right now that wherever you are your greatness will shine in the name of Jesus I say your greatness will shine in the name of Jesus the glory of the Lord will shine upon you in the name hallelujah In Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 10. Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 10. Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 10. One of the things I want to draw to your attention today is whatever you know that is what you're expecting, start doing it now. Take a step to your greatness. Do not wait for anything. Give me volume on this. Take your step to your greatness. Don't wait for anything. Take that first step to your greatness. And you will understand that that step you take, just that one step you take, the Lord will multiply it for you. In the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, for who had despised the days of small beginning? Whatever you would start tomorrow, start it today. What has made many believers to be in a place of stagnation is the spirit of procrastination. I will, I will, I shall, I shall, but you are never there at all. Year to year, you tell the same testimony. That's not growth. That is stagnation. Embracing you and romancing with you. Don't despise where you come from. Don't despise who you are. Don't despise this little seed that the Lord has put in your head. Don't look down on yourself. If Jesus had followed the testimonies of where he was born, he would have, he would have disbelieved himself that he is the Messiah. You know, the, the community where you are, have a way, or if you find yourself in the wrong crowd, 
they have a way of telling you how failed your family have become. They have a way of instilling it inside of you. They have a way of doing things or saying things to you that will make you disbelieve yourself and tell yourself that if there is anybody that will be celebrated, it will not be you. Do not move based on the opinions of men. Jesus never allowed the opinion of men to hold him down. I tell you the truth. If you're working your $14 job, please go ahead and keep working. Am I talking to somebody? If you're working your $11 job, I don't care if it's on that table or above the table. Go ahead and keep working. One day, the Lord will lift your head and exalt you up. Just keep moving. Great destinies are bound out of great necessity. Jesus' destiny was so great, but started so small and so poor. Even up to age 25, age 27, he could not, he could not successfully even go to school. The Bible says, and they took note of him that he had never been to school. So Jesus never went to school. He, I mean, Joseph was so poor that he couldn't even send Jesus to school. Coming from the lineage of David, kings couldn't go to school. Coming from a poor background, but refused to be called a poor man. Your background is called back and ground. So whatsoever that is coming against you from your background must remain behind you. Paul said, for I put those things that are behind, all those things that are putting me down, I put them behind and I stretch forth my faith up. I look forward to that glorious destiny. Learn to leave things behind you. By communicating. Jesus left his manger experience. Stop behaving like your, your, your umbilical cord was buried in poverty. Stop complaining about what you cannot change. Forget about it. Reach out to the things before you. Some of you are still holding on to yesterday. The pains and the hearts of yesterday. No wonder your life looks like this today. And if you don't correct it today, it's going to continue tomorrow. Am I communicating with somebody? Because your pains of yesterday is the spirit that is driving you and frustrating you. Every man is controlled by something. Even those that are smoking, you know, you know, all those high drugs, they are controlled. They call it substance. Am I communicating? And the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Oh my God. He said, and the evidence not seen. I may not look like those that they call rich today. But give me time. Somebody say, give me time. Give me time, I will rise. Ah, the Bible says, for the wise man falleth seven times. It says, seven times. Shall he rise again? Give me time. I may be born in the manger, but give me time. I may be from the poorest of the poor, but give me time. My destiny is about to be unveiled. Am I talking to somebody? Don't conclude me now, I tell you. Because if you conclude me now, you have concluded too early. Too early. Everybody must go through the eye of that challenge. There is a battle in this life. There is a, I tell you, listen to me. There are times in your life that is meant for you alone to go through. No matter how anointed you think you are, when that season comes, you must be left alone because destiny has programmed it that way. 
all this why wherever you see Jesus you see his disciples on the eve of his arrest he took three of his disciples and said to them come pray with me by then reality has hit him so hard and the flesh is tempting him to drop the cup and just turn it around and the Bible says he moved yonder a little bit and prayed father if it be possible let this cup pass away but he said not my will but that thy will be done when he got back to see his disciples the Bible said they were deep asleep and he asked them couldn't you just tarry with me for an hour child of God there are seasons where you have to tarry alone. Brother, sister, I am telling you that there are seasons that even your wife can't stand with you. Even your husband can't stand with you. Even those that confess with you cannot stand with you. Not because they choose not to, but because destiny has made it mandatory that you must cross over that Red Sea alone. And I come to prophesy to you today that the grace to go over shall come upon you. I said the grace to go over shall come upon you. Don't despise where you are. Stand strong. Don't despise it. A man a woman rather was having so much challenge in life so she was believing God for a ten thousand dollars and why she was believing God they invited her for a program to come preach she went into that meeting and finished preaching the man of God said to her thank you very much God bless you. Did not give her on a Miriam. Rather gave her a handshake. You know, there are some handshakes that are handshake, but they are not ordinary handshakes. And I pray that may God give you extraordinary handshakes. And when she got back home, she was so devastated and disappointed. Because she knew that even though it is $2,000, out of $10,000 is minus $2,000. So she should be looking for what? $8,000. And while she got home, she threw her Bible on the floor. Later on, picked the Bible and opened it and started reading. And the weather was so hot that she had just this little table fan so she owned the table fan and suddenly there was a knock on the door somebody said knock on the door and here it was a messenger from the host pastor said my pastor has sent me to you with this envelope he said I should tell you thank you and you know reluctantly she accepted the envelope looked at it it was so light to be ten thousand dollars it was too light to be two thousand dollars not even a thousand or five hundred dollars she carried it and dropped it on the table on her reading table watch this and the room where she was was a little bit dark she just had this lampstand on the table why she kept on reading the fan blazed towards the envelope pushed the envelope to her she moved to her bible what that she was in she moved the envelope back out of the bible the fan turned again and blazed towards the envelope and flipped the envelope and tapped the envelope by the side of the light and when she looked through because by then it is now a little bit transparent when she looked through the envelope she saw it was a check she rushed to it and opened the envelope here it was ten thousand dollars with a note saying after you left the lord instructed me to 
will sow the seed. I don't know why, but I know it's going to mean a lot to you. The same envelope that she had despised. I tell you, do not despise that messenger in your life. Do not despise that man of God in your destiny. Do not despise that messenger in your family. They may not look like those that are driving flashy cars, but they have a reason why God has placed them in your life. Who is it that has despised the days of little beginning? Who is it? That have, that have looked down on your days of little beginning. The greatest thing you can do to yourself is for you to look down on yourself. Don't despise it. There are messengers of destiny that don't act worldly. They don't look like what you're looking for. But they carry what you need. There are people in your life, they don't look like it, but they carry it. A pastor may not be driving the best of cars. He may not be as rich as you, but he has what you need. When the two messengers from God, they met with Abraham, Abraham was so spiritually sensitive to know that these men are not mere men. Am I communicating with somebody? He was so spiritually sensitive. The Bible says he brought them clothes and fed them. Gave them food to eat. And they released what was inside of them. Let me tell you, the best way to get prophecy out of a man of God is to take care of his stomach. There are certain prophecies that will never come until something goes in there. The Bible says, for the gifts of a man make it room for him. And suddenly, when they prophesied to Abraham and Sarah, his wife, Sarah mocked the prophecy. Sarah smiled and despised the message. Why? Because her age does not look like those that are still waiting for or looking for or expecting a child. Why not allow God that is a master of human, you know, you know, human structure, the creator of it, to take care of you? I have seen a woman, a woman of 70 giving birth for the first time in her life. I have witnessed people that when you look at them, you can't just fathom how come. Science can't even prove it. Science has given an age benchmark saying by the time you cross this age, forget about it. Nature has forgotten about you. But there is a God that can't forget you. If you're watching right now, you think that you'll be forgotten. Or they have given you reports that you are ruled out. Nobody has the audacity to rule you out. In fact, I rule you in in the name of Jesus. Do not allow what you are passing through to lord it over you. Lastly, don't hang around people that keep reminding you of your past. Jesus was a lone ranger. He never aligned himself with people that keep reminding him and say, Jesus, remember, you, you can never be a great man. You know why? Because me, I was even born in a very beautiful house, but you, you were born in a manger. There are people that the devil uses them like remote control just to make sure that he puts you in a place of no repute. Finish up with um, verse 10 of Zechariah chapter 4. Part B of it. For, for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. For they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. 
wherever you are, rise up on your feet. My destiny shall not be exchanged. My destiny shall not be dropped back. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy over yourself that every prophecy that have gone before you that is hanging over your head must surely come to pass. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Every greatness that is not yet manifested in my life in the name of Jesus I release the gates of my greatness in the name of Jesus I speak forth my greatness manifest by fire in the name of Jesus let my greatness manifest let my greatness oh Lord show forth I I, I, I energize my spirit man to begin to move forward. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, lift up your oil. Lift up your oil. Lift up your oil. For the Bible said that and God gave a command to Moses. He said, tell the children of Israel that they should slaughter an animal and take the blood of it and put on their doorposts. He said, for tonight there will be a move. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Father, in the name of Jesus, as all oils and bottles are lifted up, wherever your people are, everyone watching under, the, under, under, under this atmosphere, I decree in the name of Jesus that this oil will work for you. I dedicate this oil as oil of protection. The Bible said that by the raising of the anointing, say every yoke will be broken. Today, by the placing of this oil on your doorpost, every spirit of death that passes around the communities shall not come close to your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you that a thousand shall fall by thy side. Ten thousand at the right hand and no evil shall befall thee. I prophesy over your life today that you are covered by the blood of Jesus. I dedicate this oil today. And whosoever that is sick, as this oil come upon your head, Healing takes place in the name of Jesus. May this oil be a sign of supernatural coverage over you and your family. I decree this day that as this oil drops upon your household, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever that is not of God will be removed in the name of Jesus. restraining order against every power and every foul spirit. I place an injunction by heavenly authority over every foul spirit in this season. Lord, the heads of the members and partners of the dynamis power shall not answer to any coronavirus shall not answer to any accident shall not answer to any heart attack shall not answer to any infirmity cancer in the name of Jesus Lord as a priest of this house 
I stand, O oh Lord, in the gap for every soul, every man, every woman that is connected to this ministry. Lord, I pray that the same covenant of life you have with me, let it be stretched over every soul. For I give you all praise, give you all glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, for I dedicate this all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, believe in amen. Jam those hands together to the Lord God. Hallelujah. Give you all praise, Lord, and we give you all adoration. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all wherever you are right now. Thank you for tuning in. But before